what up, what up? It's your boy Fred the Godfun, aka Goldo, Fred the Ego. And shout out to real fans, real talk. Goldo, holla. It's a no step zone, boy. She left all that shit home, all that shit gone, boy. You pop for me and Mr. Mike. A different type of blend Backing up Misfit To make sure y'all tuned in You gotta watch This show is one of a kind Updates on your TV screen From 8 to 9 For the older folks So even if you younger No matter what sport This show we got it covered It's filmed live In the middle of BK So ain't no better sports show To watch on Thursdays Real, real fans, true. real talk We as real as you thought Real fans, real talk We the illest of course Real fans, real talk We the illest of course Real fans, real talk Really quick before we uh, start, I definitely want to take a quick minute to say rest in peace to Fred the Godson. Uh, He passed away as a result of catching the coronavirus. Um, So I definitely want to send condolences to his family. Uh, friends, fans, just anybody who rock with Fred the Godson, um, mad, mad cool individual. The times that I was uh, with him shooting, just always a good brother. So definitely want to send my condolences. Yeah, he um, it's very unfortunate. I remember seeing the the initial post when he was hospitalized. He had been in the hospital for about uh, three weeks, um, to the point where he was on a ventilator. And it's, it's unfortunate he leaves behind a wife, and I believe he has two young children as well. So it's, un- it's unfortunate uh, to see a young dude like that who has such a strong presence. Even though he was an underground artist, every artist out of New York respected him. Uh, French Montana was posting him earlier today. DJ Cell, DJ Envy, DJ Clue, Fabulous was posting his freestyle earlier today. So he, he definitely had a lot of respect from a lot of people and a lot of the bigger names in the industry. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Yeah, rapper's rapper. Definitely had bars. Like mm-hmm. a couple of his uh, his freestyles, man, just just crazy. So again, you know, we send our condolences to Fred the Godson. And with that being said, we're gonna get into some football. I think that maybe the biggest news right now, my main man Gronk, fresh off of the winning the twenty four seven belt on at a WrestleMania with no fans in the stands, <laughs> is officially back past the physical. So he will be joining. My other main man, Tom Brady, down in Tampa Bay with the Buccaneers, they now have three tight ends that could start on any team in the NFL uh, right now with uh, O.J. Howard, uh, Cameron Bray, and, uh, and now Gronkowski. When you add that in with, uh, with, 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 the, with Mike Evans, and oh my goodness, that offense is going to be so crazy this coming season. Well, I, I'm going I'm to interrupt you right there. I'm going to say this. It has the potential to be very good. I'm not going to go out and say they're going to be as crazy as most people think or, or as they look on paper because I think they still have to shore up some things on their offensive line. They still got to figure out who their running back is going to be. Uh, but they now have a lot of versatility, as you mentioned, with Evans, with Godwin on the outside, um, and then that rotation of Gronk, uh, Bray, and O.J. Howard they could do a lot of different things and they can really put you in some uncomfortable situations with their two tight end set. Now um, I put up a, a quick little blog about it early in the week. I honestly think Gronk's impact on that team is going to be more as a blocking tight end, similar yeah. to what he was doing, similar to what he was doing his last season with the Patriots, where he was a little bit more of a decoy early on in the game. And then later on in the game, he became more of, of Brady's go-to guy and third down target. But even with that, that makes them, again, it's very dangerous because with him helping out blocking, O.J. Howard is going to get some one-on-one coverages. God forbid Mike Evans starts getting one-on-one coverage on the outside. They've got the potential to be very scary, but, again, they got to show up the yeah. old line. they got to show up the running back position. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing, too. It looks good on paper, but I'm wondering how they're going to um, distribute the ball to everybody, and I wonder, you know, how that's going to 
go for Brady and, and Gronk because they're going to have the same connection that they had in New England. You guys think they're going to have the same connection that they had in New England or is going to? I, I think, think those two guys will. Yeah, just because they've been together for so long, I don't think that Gronk missing this past season is going to really have any bearing. Their yeah. chemistry together is just is too good. And I think it actually it, it definitely helps Brady because at the end of the day, he knows he's still got that one guy out there that if I'm in a jam, I can get it to Gronk. He's going to know exactly where I need him to be no matter what point in the game it is. I do agree with you. I think it'll be more towards – Later, later in the games, I think that it'll be Howard and Brake, um, to, you know, the first couple of quarters. But when it's go time, uh, I think that, that he'll be going back to old faithful uh, Gronkowski. And I do want to say, you, you mentioned they do need to get a running back. So this past week, I've been going through just pretty much everything, doing my own mock drafts. And they, 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 they have the 14th pick in the draft, but I think that they can get the perfect running back for them in the second round uh, with the kid uh, Clyde Edwards uh, Hilaire. He's, I think he's probably like the, the best receiving running back in this, uh, in this draft class. He, uh, 453 yards, 55 receptions. And even though I like uh, the kid, uh, was it uh, DeAndre Swift out of Georgia? I think he may be the best running back, but we know that Tom Brady needs that, that James White that are Rex Burkhead, you know, those guys. He likes those those receiving backs. So I think that he would actually be the perfect fit, and they most likely won't have to trade up to get him because, again, Swift will, will more than likely be the first running back off the board anyway. So I think if they could get him, I think they'll, they'll be set. Do you think it's possible that with the first, the, the first selection in the first round, what is it, like number 12, 14? They're, they're 14 at 14. For the, for the right, you, they're you at think, 14. Do you think um, they could probably trade back a little bit, grab some picks, and then and then um, grab like Swift, one of those guys in the first round? You think that's possible or no? A little bit too early um, to grab. I don't know if they go back to draft Swift just because again, he, he's not as good as a receiving back. Okay. So and I think with the Bucks, it's pretty much we got to win it now within these next two years that we got Brady under contract because that was the whole us bringing Brady in as far as to win now this year or you know or next year. So they got to put pieces around Tom Brady on the offense that are going to – he's going to be able to get the, the, the most out of. And he needs that receiving back. You, you guys see the damage that he's done with James White. I've had James White the past four years in fantasy football, and he <laughs> never lets me down. He's, he can get you anywhere from five to ten catches a game, maybe uh, you know, a receiving touchdown. He might get you a receiving and a rushing touchdown, plus maybe 40, 50 yards on the ground. So that's – you know, that's ideal for Tom Brady is to have that pass catching back. Yeah, I, I, I do. I, I do like the, the pick if that's where they go in the second round. I think first round they will look to shore up some of the O-line issues. Um, yeah. Again, because they're right in that range at 14 where O-linemen, the value would be best. Um, only, only concern I would have with, a, with them going with a rookie running back as a primary back would be him understanding the protection um, understanding the whole playbook. Because, again, you're asking a lot. Tom Brady's going to need protection. Tom Brady, we, we know he's never been a mobile quarterback, and he moves even less now than he did early on in his, in his prime. So yeah. you want to have a running back who's very stout in pass protection. You want to have a running back that you can rely on, that you don't have to kind of hold his hand through the season. So Hilaire may be a guy they, they bring on, and then they, they may kind of um, – do a running back by committee where it's him sharing the carries with another guy. Yes. Um, I, I, again, I think they could go there. Um, but I, my only thing would be, I wouldn't expect too much from a rookie running back on this particular team again, because there's going to be a crash course. We already know that there's going to be probably a limited off season workout mm. for a lot of these rookies. And so you're going to have to be up to speed on the pass protections on the audibles really quickly to get a majority of the, the snaps with this Buccaneer team. Yeah, and I do agree. I think I uh, I think they go offensive line uh, with that 14th overall pick because you got to protect Tom Brady. But again, you know, like you said earlier, the other good thing about bringing in Gronk is that protection as well. So so now you you get a top offensive lineman with that 14th pick. You got Gronk who can also protect the the quarterback, and then you can come back around. Like I said, you can handle the running back situation later. Maybe they want to add a, a, another piece or two on the defense. Defense is not is not bad, but you know, 
I think they're probably middle of the pack right now. Um, so if they can add with them later picks that they have, get an, an, uh, another defensive player or two, I think they'll be in um, sitting in, in good shape for the season. Yeah, I'm interested to see what they do in the second round because there's going to be a lot of quality guys in the second round. This is a very deep draft. Um, and, and just the fact that we look at these playmaking receivers and those guys aren't even expected to go until the teens of this draft, that shows you how deep this draft is. There's going to be a lot of movement. There's going to be a lot of trading, as Nesta alluded to earlier. I wouldn't be surprised if they go running back in the second round. I wouldn't be surprised if they go defense and, and add another corner back in the second round. Um, their defense came on towards the end of last season. Granted, I wasn't too impressed because they kind of their schedule kind of tailed off at the end of the season. Um, but you can make the argument either way because we know Jameis throwing 30 interceptions put their defense in a lot of bad spots as well. You know, exactly. So it's it's potential that just the addition of Brady makes their defense a little better now. They won't have to worry about playing on the short field as much. They won't have to worry about the turnovers as much. So mm -hmm. Tampa's one of the intriguing teams in this draft. You do you think um you think it's um the, St the Saints division still or do you think uh Tampa could win the division this year take over with the additions so far? I think I I still give it to the Saints. Um, Sean Payton, Drew Brees. I think that team is stacked on both sides of the ball. Um, when you add an Emmanuel Sanders to Michael Thomas to Alvin Kamara uh, to Jared Cook, they got a lot of weapons, man, and they already were one of the premier teams. I mean. We look at the way they've lost the last three in the playoffs. It's been heartbreaking losses. They, they arguably have been the best team in the NFC. Um, so I'm still going to give them the respect that they're the best team in the division. But the Buccaneers are slowly closing that gap, and adding Gronk makes them even more dangerous. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it's, it's, it's theirs to lose. Um, you know, and granted, you know, they've found ways to lose it in the playoffs the past couple of Absolutely. seasons. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but I, I, I will say this. The addition of, of Gronk, you know, for me, I got them. I boosted them up to 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 top three as far as in chances to win the NFC to come out of the NFC. I I think you know it's between the Forty Nine ers the Saints, and and I guess can we call them the, the Patriots South now? <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> that they got. I mean, they add one. Yeah, they add one more guy. Edelman, yeah, Edelman, they. Edelman's available. They they talking about trading Edelman. I mean, too, if you get that, you throw Edelman in the yeah. slot. <laughs> Oh my goodness! You you can give it up right now. Then if you add Edelman to the to the, be a slot receiver on that team, then I, I I'm I'm taking the Bucks as the favorite to 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 come out of the NFC. Yeah, I, like I said, I, I still want to see it first. I do like what they're doing. I and I like like I said, I like the addition of Gronk because of the rapport he already has with Brady, but also because of how great he is as a blocking tight end. Um, yep. That pretty much every snap they're going to be playing with six offensive linemen because. As we mentioned, whether it's Brait staying in the block, Howard staying in the block, Gronk staying in the block, all three of those tight ends can block. And mm -hmm. so now you strengthen your protection. Um, and then and if they, know, they run a lot of two tight end sets. Right. Now you got two extra guys. Sets. <laughs> right. Two tight end sets. And, and we know Brady gets rid of the ball quick. Brady doesn't take many big hits. You know, he'll, he'll, he'll give himself up and just slide or go down before he takes a big hit. So yep. all, all those things are going to make their offense a little better. Um, but, again, I want to see it because this time last year, we were going crazy about the moves the Browns were making, right? When they got Kareem Hunt, when they got Odell Beckham, uh, you know, and second-year Baker, we thought they were going to really light things up, and their offense struggled. And as Nesta mentioned earlier, there's only but so much football to go around. Everybody can't be involved in every play. And so not to say this is going to be the same situation as the Browns, but until I see it, I'm not going to jump out the window and anoint this team as the best team in the NFC as Tripp said, I, I've got them actually a little lower. I got them four. I think, mm -hmm. I think the Niners are still the best team in, in the NFC. I think the Saints are right behind them. And then I think right in that third spot, don't forget about the Seahawks. The Seahawks are still a very good team. They okay. were a little banged up going into the playoffs last year. And Russell Wilson might be the best quarterback in the NFC. Yeah, uh, listen, shout out to Russell Wilson, man. You know, we, we show him a lot of love. So, yeah, if you, if you, if you throw Seattle up there, I ain't mad at you. If you if you go with put the Bucks in the top three, I'm not mad at you either way. What I will say is one move that maybe they should actually look into is going after Trent Williams. Uh, because they were talking about you could probably get him for a second round pick, maybe like a second and a fifth or a second and a sixth. You know what I'm saying? You throw something together. If you do that, you get trade for, for Trent Williams, draft another young cat, you know, with that 14th pick, and then come back around and start filling out the spots after that. Too, man, they 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 might get get really 
<laughs> crazy. I well, I, I, with the uh, they don't have the the cap space to be able to do it now because yeah. Gronk. I was wondering, yeah. Yeah, they don't. Oh, have the, ten million. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, Gronk. Gronk holds a ten million dollar cap hold for this season. Um, so they 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 were already a little tight on cap money anyway, even before Gronk. But now they're they're at a point I think where they only have about three million dollars, and you still got okay, so yeah. You still got to figure out, you know, draft picks, um, you know, and any small moves that you make, maybe to fill out your special teams, things like that. So that wouldn't happen. Um, but tonight could be the night where we see the Redskins actually move Trent Williams and find a way to get another first round pick. Um, they're a team that that's that's interesting too because if they get Chase Young, which which is everyone's predicting at this point and projecting, they spent a lot of draft capital on their defensive line. Uh, Jonathan Allen a couple years ago, um, mm-hmm. obviously Chase Young, Montez Sweat last year. Yeah. They're a team that's building it, their defense from the inside out, similar to the 49ers. Um, and, and that's what helped the 49ers go into what they are now because they spent a lot of draft capital on their front seven. Yeah, I, I, I definitely agree with you on that. I mean, yeah, that, that defensive line is going to start looking as scary as the 49ers defensive line with Chase Young, who's – the best player in this draft. We're just gonna call it what it is. As you know, I, I love Joe Burrow. I mean, I, I love, I love to. And even though I'm a, I'm a tour guy over Joe Burrow guy. If you, you know, minus the injuries, of course. But Chase Young is the best player in this draft, hands down. So you add them to a line. I like Montez Sweat as well. I got him on my, on my uh, team in Madden right now. <laughs> I made the trade for him. So yeah, they, they're gonna have a serious defensive line. Yeah, you, you like I said, you pair up Sweat with. Uh, Chase Young, I mean, some of these people are saying Chase Young is better than Bosa, and we saw the impact Bosa had last year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it could get really it could get really interesting in that NFC East if the Redskins start to build that type of like fearsome foursome where they could just get after the quarterback with their fr- front four. Well, you need to, because all the, all the quarterbacks, you got, you got, you got Dak, you, you got Carson Wentz, uh, Daniel Jones is coming along, so you're going. You need that that strong defensive line to play in the NFC East. So they they on they on the right track. I, you know, I I know people are sending them trade offers. If if I'm Washington, I don't I don't give up that pick. I don't. You got You got to go with, with with Young in that uh, in in that situation. I'm, there's there's nothing else. I mean, I get it. They may, you know, Haskins didn't have the greatest of years. But again, I mean, it's it's one year. He didn't even get to play an, an entire season, you know. So I, I think you take your time with with Haskins, you know. See what you got. I mean, I, we don't know if Alex Smith is going to ever get back, but he is technically still on the on on the roster. We haven't heard anything about him. So I would I would I would keep him around and just go with, with, with Young at that at that pick, and just you know have one of the best defensive lines in football. That's that's what what you need on on defense anyway. You got to have that line secured. So you I guys agree now. Oh, sorry. I was gonna say you no, guys. No, no, Nesta. I wanted to ask you a question, Nesta. Yeah. We on, we on the topic of defense. Um, your team, the Buffalo Bills, had one of the best defenses last year. Um, mm-hmm. You you guys went and got a first. Uh, Use your first round, I should just say, to, to acquire a receiver. Patriots look like they're going to go in a rebuild mode. What are your thoughts going into the season? Do you feel it's your division? Yeah, I feel it's our division. But then again, at the end of the day, I feel we we still have to, you know play the game and we still have to do what we have to do. You know, we can't just go into the season just assuming that, you know, it's our division, you know. I like and then being said, it's it's still the Patriots division till we knock them off. Um, but I feel good now that Tom Brady's out the division. <laughs> Bronx <laughs> not there. <laughs> Hopefully the Miami Dolphins, we'll see what they do because it look, looks like they're gonna have like a whole bunch of draft picks and they're gonna build this thing the right way, hopefully. You know, and and the Jets, um I don't know with the Jets right now. I mean, they're looking to build around Donald so um, I think right now we're in the driver's seat. You know, we just have to – we're trying to see where we're going to go in the second round. Our defense is good. I think we need to probably add – I would like to see us get a running back because um, I don't believe Singletary is like a three-down back. I think we got to give him a little help. So, um, I, I definitely think that, you know, we have control of the division right now. I was having a conversation uh, with my boy earlier, and I, I told him – Looking at right now how the rosters are for every team in the AFC, I got Buffalo coming out of uh, of the East. Uh, and unless uh, the Patriots get Cam Newton, I think that's that he would he would probably be the only quarterback 
that I would say they could get right now. And I, and for me to be like, okay, they're going to win this division again, just because we were talking about bringing over an MVP. If he's healthy, Belichick will, will get the best out of Cam Newton. He, he probably, he, he may, he may get back to MVP form if he's healthy playing under, underneath Belichick. But if not, if they're going in with a uh, Stitham and a uh, Hoya, and if they do wind up drafting one of the, the, the young cats, Buffalo's got it. Their defense is too good. And even, you know, I know you spoke about Singletary, you know, and not being a third down back. My issue with him is his health. I don't know if he can stay healthy long enough. Um, but I do think that the addition of Stefan Diggs is going to take a lot of pressure off of Singletary. And I think that the Bills will – will be cool with passing the ball a little bit more because when you got a guy like Stephon Diggs, they can pretty much just go get it anywhere on the field. I think that they're going to start opening up the passing game, which will take a lot of the pressure off of Singletary because, they, I mean, let's be honest, they, they, they got their running game last season. Yeah. John Brown is okay, you know what I mean? But there's no big play guys out there. Now they have that. Yeah, definitely. I agree. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I was I was high on you guys last year. Um, I, I really like what they're building over there with Sean McDermott. Um, I think Allen is is slowly developing. He's still very raw, um, but as Tripp mentioned, you need that guy to make to plays for you. You need that guy on the outside, and I think that's what ultimately hurt you guys in the in the playoff game against Houston. You just couldn't get the big first down late to kind of put him away. Um, and now you have the guy who's going to at least demand the double team on one side. And it'll free up things for other receivers and against teams that don't have an elite cornerback. Diggs should feast against them. Diggs is, is he's really good, man. I, you know, you guys paid a steep price for him, but I think it's going to be well worth it if you guys win a division and at least make some sort of playoff run. Yeah. I would like to see them um, maybe pick up a tight end, but there's not so many tight ends coming out of, of this draft. And I don't think the, the, the best, uh, Tight end that's available is the kid uh commit, Cole Commit. And I don't think he'll be available once the Bills actually have a pick. I think he's gonna be long gone, especially, you know, with the with the Patriots up there, because they, they might be looking into trying to bring in a new tight end since you know they love the uh the tight end position so much. Um but yeah, man, I I think I think the Bills got it unless the unless the Patriots do wind up bringing in a, a, a top tier quarterback like him. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I had wanted to get a tight end too. I was I was hoping that they would at least like try to make a run for like Austin Hooper or someone to create, but they didn't do it. So I guess they believe in Dawson Knox. So uh, you know, yeah, they, and they got him for the low too. Cleveland, I feel like they didn't even give up too much. Yeah, well, they 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 got him out right in free agency. Um, Knox is the guy that you guys the, the Buffalo really likes, and they want to see him yeah. develop. Um, and in regards to Komet, he like you said, Trip, he probably will be off the board. Most projections have him going late first round. Um, mm -hmm. If he slides into the second round, I don't think he'll last long there. Um, yeah. But, yeah, you know, Buffalo is, is really isn't a big-time free agency destination, so they may have kicked the ties on Hooper, and Hooper may have said, nah, I'm not really that interested. Um, yeah. You know, Buffalo has always struggled in that regard to be able to land um, quality free agents to come up there. And that sucks, too, because Hooper – could have put them over the top with Diggs out there now. Hooper, you got your running back, and you got a quarterback who's gotten consistently better, and then you have a top defense. He he may have pushed them to, as from going for me to say they're the favorites to win the division to now being a Super Bowl contender to yeah. to get him. But that's where they're struggling the most is on the offensive end with the he doesn't have enough weapons. Yeah. They they got to I think they still got to get him one more weapon. They they may not be done. Um, you know, it's, it's possible. Uh, you guys don't have a first, but you do have a second round, I believe, and, and maybe yeah. it's possible that yeah. they're targeting um, one of these receivers. Again, there's projections that we're looking at nine, possibly even ten receivers going, um, you know, in the first two rounds. So mm -hmm. there's there's going to be a lot of help on the outside there. Um, there's always the potential to to trade up a little bit. Um, you know, I don't know I don't know if you guys are willing to give up future assets, but you may be willing to give up something in the future to move into that late first round uh, point and and get a, a Jalen uh, Rager or get commit you know get a get a guy who can help you on the other side of those digs. Well, like with Josh Allen and 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 and, 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 and um and what's the name from the Jets? I uh, can't think of. Donald. 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 Yeah, your contract's gonna be rookie contracts will be up soon. So you think it's some 
Do you think that the Bills and the Jets this season are going to really be looking forward to seeing the progress with these guys? And you think they are um, going to think these guys are long term? You think they're going to sign these guys long term or what? They're the future or what? Uh, I think, yes, uh, they were both um, high picks. So the investment is there. At, at the very least, they're going to pick up the fifth year option on both those guys. Yeah. Um, Buffalo is in a much better position than the Jets are. And I think that's why Buffalo went after Diggs because the recent trend has been to go after your high price skill position players when your quarterback's on his rookie deal. So right. to get Diggs now while Allen is still on a rookie deal makes total sense. It makes perfect sense. Um, on the flip side of that, the Jets are in a really bad spot, I think, because Adam Gates has a lot to prove this year. And they still don't have the weapons for Darno. He still hasn't played a full season. The old line is shaky. They've got way more question marks than the Buffalo Bills. So if you're Buffalo, you continue to just go all in. And worst case scenario, you've got at least two more years to try to win something with Allen. With the Jets, if they don't, if they don't at least go eight and eight this year, Adam Gates may be out of a job. And then you start the whole process all over again with another coach coming in, um, trying to figure out what they want to do. Joe Douglas, this is his first year as GM. So he may not even be happy with the pieces that are already on his team. We're going to learn a lot about the Jets during the draft today too, I think, um, because Joe Douglas wasn't a part of, again, the previous regime. He's coming in now. He's going to want his fingerprints all over the new idea of this team. So where do you think the Jets go with that first round draft pick with that being said? Personally, I think they should take Judy. Um, you've got, again, you've got to get Darno a receiver. You've got to get him a weapon. The guy's back rambling for his life. He's taking a lot of punishment back there. And I know people are going to say get him an old line, but he still has no one to throw to. They let Robbie Anderson go to the Panthers for cheap. Yeah. So you you got to at least get him something. Quincy Anumwa can't stay healthy. Uh, Le'Veon Bell, you know, the, the, the coach wasn't a fan of Le'Veon from the start of last season. And Le'Veon you know, it's kind of been in his doghouse throughout the season, um, ending last year anyway, coming into this new season. Get him Judy. Get him a playmaker. Get him a guy on the outside that he can just put it up for and say, go get that. Yeah. You know, but like honestly, what I think – Um. so I think Judy is the more polished receiver. I do like C.D. Lamb. C.D. honestly reminds me a lot of Steve Smith. He's He's very physical – very aggressive receiver who's willing to go over the middle and he will make plays over the middle of the field. But Judy is very precise in his route running. Uh, Judy isn't a, uh, he, he doesn't take the top off the defense, but he, he's a very great, very good route runner. He, he's a guy who understands what the defense is trying to give him. He reminds me a lot of like a Reggie Wayne type receiver. And those guys you can't pass on because those are quality guys that are, are going to be Pro Bowl receivers for 10 years in your organization. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, he's, he's the best wide receiver in this draft class. He's a guy that's going to come in immediately and make an impact for your team if your quarterback can get him, get him the football. But he, but that that's his caliber of player. Again, he's one of the best route runners as far as these guys, the top wide receivers period that are coming in. He's one of the best route runners as well. If you get a guy like that for Sam Donald, you know they might make a little bit of noise together if he can, you know, stay away from the mono this season. <laughs> I mean, I, th I think it's like, you know, I'm not, I'm not down on the Jets. Um, I don't want to make it sound like I'm down on them, like, oh, they, this is a do-or-die season. I don't want to say that because at the end of the day, as you mentioned, with the mono, uh, with the injuries that they had last year, they still went 7-9. and nine. You know, they yeah. were still competitive. It's just that they got off to such a bad start because Darnold gets mono. C.J. Mosley, who was their big free agency pickup, got hurt early in the season. Uh, mm -hmm. Le'Veon had to carry a load. Again, Quincy Anuwan wasn't completely healthy. They, at one point, were playing their third-string quarterback. So they had so many things going on, along with the fact that Adam Gase was the new head coach implementing a new offensive game plan. So I don't think they're that far off. But I do think it would be a mistake for them to just take an offensive lineman and play it safe and not at least try to upgrade the weapons. Because at least if you get Judy or even C.D. Lamb, whoever you prefer there, either one of those guys, that alleviates the pressure off Le'Veon Bell as well. Because now you mm -hmm. can't just sit eight men in a box. you got to respect that receiver on the outside. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. Yeah, a lot of people we're gonna see is a lot of people at the Jets going offense, offense, offense to tackle. Yeah, and and I know a lot of people are big on on the on the on Makai Becton, um, and I'm not you know I, I don't think he's a bad player. I think he's a solid tackle, but I just think for the Jets you need weapons. You got to get a weapon. And that's in Judy is an is an impact player. You know I'm even suit even with the uh, with the Giants. You know, I know they they 
it's been a toss up. I've been going back and forth hearing Isaiah Simmons or uh, Willis out of out of Alabama. Mm-hmm. I mean, as I, I want to take, uh, I want Simmons just because I, you know, he is so multifaceted, and then he can play against so many different positions. You know, to come in for the for the Giants, and they after they, they signed Blake Martinez, I think that that linebacker Cole would be crazy. But I, you know, if they go with Willis, it's obviously it's not the attractive pick because you know it's just it's a lineman. But I mean, coming out of Alabama, those those guys, you know, really good. He's he's the best uh, offensive tackle. And then I know that they'll probably wind up going to uh, either guard or in the with that with their second round pick because they got, I believe they got the, either the first or the second pick in the second round of the draft. So they'll probably take two linemen if they do that. But I'm hoping that that uh, they just you know just go with Simmons. Because he is going to be a, a franchise difference making linebacker. Yeah, I, I think um, I agree. I would prefer them to take Simmons. Um, I would be really interested to see how they would use Simmons and Jabril Peppers on that defense because both of those guys are what you call a Swiss Army knife that they can play so many different positions. Uh, safety, they could play in the slot. Uh, they could play, you know, down in the box as 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 an additional linebacker, um, they can cover. So you would have so much versatility on that defense by having those two guys um, on the same defense. I do think for the Giants, it may get interesting. There were recent reports that um, the Lions may take Derek Brown at number three as opposed to Jeff Okuda. Yeah, um, which I started hearing that recently. Right, right. That news actually started circulating within like the last two hours that – Derek Brown, which Derek Brown has has been high on a lot of people's draft boards all year. Um, He's an absolute beast at defensive tackle. Again, one of those guys that is not a sexy pick unless you really watch and love football, but he's an impact guy that can really shore shore up your defensive line. Um, And if the Lions do that, if the Giants are staring at Simmons or Akuda, Trip, as a Giant fan, who would you prefer there? Simmons. Hands down, Simmons. For for the Lions, it made perfect sense because they just got rid of um, uh, Darius uh, Slay, so it makes perfect right. sense for them. For the Giants, you know, I, I'm okay with the secondary right now. Obviously, I mean, you can't go wrong with either pick, but I just think when the the Giants were were really great when they had a good defensive line and they had those good middle linebackers backing them up. And again, you know, as as good as Okuda is, I just think Simmons will be able to do more for the Giants than Okuda will. Plus, you can throw him out there; he can freaking play corner too, probably. So yeah, I mean, he's fast you, you can't go right. You can't go wrong with either one of those guys. I'm really intrigued by Okuda. Um, you know, just the way he handles himself. He had two really good years at Ohio State. Um, the comparisons to Stephon Gilmore to Patrick Peterson; those are real comparisons. Like, the yeah. dude is legit, um, and he's a man cover guy. So, you know, again, depending on what the Giants' new regime is looking for with the new head coach, they may be intrigued by having that shutdown corner. Again, new head coach has ties to New England. He saw how great that defense could be having a guy like Stephon Gilmore who could shut down one side of the field. That could be in play for you guys. But I, I, would, I would definitely go with Simmons or Okuda as opposed to Wills and going to O-line. I think you guys have spent too much time trying to show up this old line and I get it. You, you want to make it as best as possible for Saquon and for Daniel Jones, but you also got to get impact players on the other side of the ball. You guys went and got Hernandez uh, last year. You spent a first round pick on Eric flowers a few years ago. You paid yeah. the money to Nate Solder. You know what I'm saying? At some point you got to get impact guys on the other side of the ball as well. Yeah. Do, do the Giants, are there a three, four defense or four, three defense? Cause they said, depending on the defense, that's where Simmons is going to flourish the most. Well, right now it's up in the air because, again, it's a new coaching regime. So we don't really know what their plan is. Um, last year they were running, I think, more of a 3-4 of a defense because they had even brought in Leonard Williams to be like the nose tackle on that. Yeah. Um, so I, they may stay with that. That's 3-4 was kind of one of the things that Bill is always running in New England. But, again, we won't know until the new regime comes in. But that's the, that's the beauty in Simmons because Simmons could do all those things. If, if you decide to play a 4-3, he's going to be an outside linebacker that you're going to use to rush a quarterback at times. Um, yeah. I don't think he'll have his hand in the ground coming at quarterbacks, but you will see him used in so many different ways that they'll find ways to get him to the quarterback. And then when the time calls for it, he can play out on a receiver. He can play out on, on, you know, on pass-catching tight ends. He could do everything. 
Yeah, I, that, that's why I want him. Like, I'm, I'm just like, you know, just go get Simmons. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't care. You know, I'm an Alabama guy. I love, I love Willis. I want the Giants to go get, uh, get Simmons with that fourth pick. Uh, he's the second best defensive player in in this draft. And again, he's he's going to be a franchise changer for whatever team gets him. So I want him to come come to New York, man. We we need you out here. We we got to get back to the to the glory days, man. So I definitely want the Giants to take Simmons. If you want to get some help on the O line, take you got a second round pick that's really high. You can grab somebody, you know, with that with that second round draft pick. But with that fourth pick, you got you got to take Simmons. Yeah, I we, think that my only concern with Simmons is, you know, Simmons. He, he's a little light when you think about linebackers. He's, he's about 235, 240. Um, so you always worry about how is he going to handle the run game. Um, but he does everything else really well. And again, for me, I would just be really intrigued just from a bystander, you know, outside looking in, how they would use him and Peppers together. Because Peppers did a lot of those same things for you guys last year. When you got Peppers yeah. in that Odell trade, Peppers played a little safety, played a little linebacker, played a little corner. And Peppers actually played well for you guys last year. So to have two guys that are so versatile and so like they can just play anywhere on the on the on the field, it'll be interesting to see what the defense coordinator can do with that. Yeah, no, no, definitely, you're, you're absolutely right. So, but I but I am hoping they they they, they do wind up picking up Simmons. God, we got about three minutes and forty seconds before the uh, Bengals get on the clock. Just want to update you guys at home. We will be going through the well, not the entire draft, excuse me, but the first round. We're gonna we're gonna get as much of the first round uh, as, as we can. <laughs> And into this uh, special. We're going on Zoom for the next 72 hours. We're not getting off. We're we just <laughs> doing all the whole draft. <laughs> Throughout the weekend. We'll be here. Yeah, can just watch it. We'll just sleep on Zoom and then come right back on as a draft starts. Exactly. Ness, ne- you good for the weekend? <laughs> yeah. <I'm done. laughs> clear, the, clear the schedule. Clear the schedule. We're just going live the whole weekend. What's up, guys? I'm Emerald Marie. And be sure to check us out on the web at realfansrealtalk.com. This is your African King that's coming, Michael Blackson. You're watching Real Friends Real Talk. Get real with it, my son. Type of blend backing up misfit to make sure y'all tuned in. You gotta watch this show is one of a kind. Updates on your TV screen from eight to nine for the older folks. So even if you're younger, no matter what sport, this show we got it covered. It's filmed live in the middle of BK, so ain't no better sports show to watch on Thursdays. Real, real fans, show. real talk, we as real as you thought. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk. We the What's up, guys? I'm Emerald Marie, and be sure to check us out on the web at realfansrealtalk.com.